And now, it's time for another episode with the two brothers who ice fish from the same hole, who have kicked the same field goals, and who will have you laughing from start to finish. Bringing you the sports, music, and entertainment straight from their Eskimo hut. It's the Eskimo Brothers Podcast. What up out there, everybody? Welcome in. Welcome in to the Eskimo Brothers podcast. Episode number 132. Holy hell, bro. It's crazy to think about the number grows, bro. It's growing, growing, growing. But uh, it is 132, like I said, and it's a special little episode this weekend. We uh, we are live on a Saturday morning. Good. Hey, good morning. It's early, bro. Yeah. It's early. I mean, I'd, I'd be up already just because I get up early for work throughout sure. the week. But uh, sure. I mean, yes, yeah, I got a gig at one p.m. and so, and then we got the Rangers game later at six. So we thought uh, I probably need to do it before the gig. And yes, well, uh, we were just going to be drinking at your gig. Yeah, I'm, I'm definitely going to be drinking there. So, yeah, and then it's at a brewery, so it yeah. makes. I mean, what do you do at a brewery? Yeah, I mean, you got to drink. Yeah. And so I'm gonna, I mean, you don't have to, but we yeah. will. Yeah, no, yeah, we will. It's a Saturday, too. By the way, whenever we go over to the brewery, and, and any brewery for that matter, we've talked about this a little bit, but there's always, like, families. Yeah. So, so people bring their kids and everything, which, yeah. hey, you know, whatever. I just never, ever had the inkling to be like, I'm going to take my kid over there so I can drink. <laughs> yeah, I've never done that before in my life. Yeah, I just always find that weird that uh, that people... Just, I, I don't know, they just, they drink, obviously. Yeah. And they're just like, let's go home now, kids. And I'm like, all right. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't sound like a good decision. Yeah. Whatever. Hey, man, whatever floats your boat, I'm not, I'm not going to uh, bust your balls for it. I just thought it was interesting and weird. Yeah, I take my 14-year-old because uh, he likes to watch me play gigs, but I don't drink when I'm, right. when he's with me. Yeah, that's exactly right. Like, if I took my daughter over to that brewery, I'd be like, well, I'm just going to drink water, but why am I in a brewery? Exactly, yeah. Yeah. There's other places. Yeah, I'll just go I'm sure, to... I'm sure she would <clears> have a blast. <throat> I'll just go to Chili's. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways. Yeah. That's where, yeah, g- uh, gigging over at the brewery, Leaf is. Uh, so I'll be over there hanging out, drinking and uh, chilling. I know there's a few people coming out, so if you're watching us live on YouTube right now, hello. Yeah. Uh, come I mean, out. If you're in the Fort Worth area, that's yeah. where it'll be at Three Wide Brewing. We're over yeah. there by the Speedway. Just hop in and let's let's day drink. Let's get these guys to sponsor us, too. Yeah, really. Be like, we'll drink all of your beers on stream, and we'll do a show from there, and we'll get hammered. Sounds like a plan. Tell everybody it's the best place ever. I'll talk, I'll talk to the my contact over there. Yeah, there you go, bro. <laughs> <clears throat> no, but it's uh, it's going to be a good day. That's why we're live early on Saturday morning. So instead of watching Saturday morning cartoons, make sure you're tuning into us. Yeah. Because that's what we're here for. We're more entertaining anyway. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're holding off on the alcohol for now. Yeah, no, there's no way. <laughs> Dude, leave <laughs> drinks for like three hours before his gig. He would get up there and be like, bling, bling, bling. Yeah, like well, hey, Leaf, uh, it was nice to have you those couple times. We're not going to have you back. <laughs> yeah, that would be the, definitely the last time. I'd be like, hey, boy. <laughs> I should have been a cowboy. <laughs> You'd be like that guy on that fucking TikTok that I sent you, bro. With oh, the, he God. was like, the, he was holding the mic up like yeah. this. He was like, and I was in a fist. <laughs> Karaoke bros. That guy's hammered. Who gave him the mic? Yeah. Yeah. He was like laying on the ground. He's like, fucking How's singing. How's this guy not getting kicked out of this place yet? He's singing REM, bro. Yeah. I was like, All right, you know what, brother? Go for it. Yeah, man. <laughs> mm. But, uh, man, we're back here live again. Um, of course, we did Thursday for opening day. We're going to get into the, to the opening day with the baseball and everything. But, man, that was a fun stream on Thursday. Yeah, it was. Had a I blast. didn't know how that was going to go. I didn't either. But uh, I was like we're watching it, the game, and then you look down, there's like 40-something people watching. I'm yeah. like, holy shit, what's up? Yeah, man. Yeah, it's, it, it, there's more people showed up in the beginning than I thought. So yeah. I, was, I was like, well, I, I thought it was just going to be like three or four people. Yeah, you know same, I mean? same. 
kind of with the regular people. Well, I was like, there's in. no way this beats football, right? Right, yeah, because we've had some badass football streams. Yeah. And this one blew those out of the water. It did, dude. It was pretty cool. I was really, I was really happy. I was like, and well. Yeah, we gained a ton of subscribers, like what, 13 or so? Yeah, 13, we, 14. 13 to 14. So thank you for subbing and on there. And I had to, um, I don't, I mean, towards the end of the game, we were having such a blast that, you know, the game was awesome, by the way. So we'll get into that in a yeah. minute. But uh, thanks for joining us if you if you did on Thursday. That was a lot of fun. So hopefully we can do more of those. Uh, but okay, let's jump into 132 so we can, can you know get through this episode and uh, have a wonderful little Saturday as we're speaking about. So, um, <clears throat> all right, first things first. We told you guys that we were going to start doing this every week, um, to attempt to do this every week, of course. And uh, I mean, I, I'm pretty sure we can make it happen. But we watch a random movie, and then we talk about it on the podcast. And so I found a like a movie ran like a generator that random randomizes and picks a movie. You can put in like a time frame and everything. And I did like I don't know, like eighty five to two thousand. Now I think. Yeah. Anyways, um, and then not, not specific genre or anything. Just kind of what? It, well, obviously, if something comes up like Cinderella, I'll be like, hey, let's skip. Let's go ahead and skip that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but this one this week was another movie that uh, me and Leaf both haven't seen, actually. And it was called Before the Devil Knows You're Dead. That was the movie that, that popped up. Um, I had not seen this. Leaf had said he didn't see it. It yeah, came out in 2007. It. It's labeled as a crime thriller film directed by Sidney Lemieux. That's how you say it? Limit. Lemieux, whatever. May, maybe. Yeah. Uh, Philip Seymour Hoffman and Ethan Hawker in this, bro. Yeah, I was kind of shocked by the yeah. casting. I was, I was like, like, how the fuck did I not hear yeah, about I was like, this? How did I not see this? Yeah. And so, um, crime thriller, Marissa Tomei is in it, by the way. Also, mm-hmm. when I when I started this movie, the first scene took me off guard, bro. I'm like, oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, I was like, well, okay. It was fucking straight porn. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> the movie opens up, bro, and Philip Seymour Hoffman's banging Marissa Tomei. I was like, all right. I was like, hey. She's so. hot. Yeah, yeah, she's crazy hot, dude. Well, she was then. Yeah. I mean, that was a long time ago now. Right. She's still hot as anime. Yeah, she was still hot as anime. R.I.P. <laughs> right. Spoiler alert. Yeah. Anime fucking dies, <laughs> and they make you cry in the movie. Yeah. Fucking Tom <clears throat> Holland, bro. Yeah, yeah. Twice. <laughs> so, um, like I said, crime thriller film, and it's basically pretty much a story about a family is what it is. Yeah. And the two brothers, which are played by Philip Seymour Hoffman and Ethan Hawke, Andy and Hank, that's what their names are in the movie, uh, they're broke, and yes. they need cash. And so they come up with a with a scheme that basically Andy does, who is Philip Seymour Hoffman, the older brother. Right. He comes up with a, hey, I'm, you know, we're both broke, we both need money, we got money problems, and I got a, I got a plan in place, a scheme in place to, to get us, I think, what, 600K? Is what they're saying? Yeah, and then after he sells it, it, it came down to something like sixty thousand each for them, which isn't a ton of money. No, not really. <laughs> yeah, for how much prison time you could get? Yeah. Okay. So they they talk about it, of course, and you know, obviously not going over every little detail, but <clears throat> they talk about it, and then the younger brother Hank is like kind of a bitch. He's the baby of the family, so he's yeah. kind of a scaredy cat. Yeah, yeah. Real but he finally family. agrees, and uh, he didn't tell him what the place was they're gonna like rob. Yeah. Though until he said he was in. Yeah, until he fully committed, he wasn't yeah. gonna tell him what the what they're gonna do. So uh, he finally says, "Fuck it, I'm I'm super." Another thing happens, and he's like, "I'm so broke, I need." Uh, okay, let's do it. I'm in. And then he reveals to him, "Like, hey, we're gonna rob our." own mother and father's jewelry store. Yeah. Because their mom and dad own a jewelry store. Right. <clears throat> also, I will say this, too. The way the movie is, it jumps back and forth through that week. Yeah, yeah. And so I thought that was kind of interesting how they did that. Yeah, like it when it starts off after that whole sex scene that you see. Yeah. <laughs> and then it goes like, day of the robbery. And yeah. I was like, what the fuck is this? Yeah. And then, so it goes through that part, but then it jumps back to like three days before the robbery and it shows how the, it led up to that point and stuff. To each character. Yeah. So it'll be like, Hank, three days before the robbery yeah. and then it'll jump forward to Andy and then it'll go back seven days before the robbery Andy. I'm like, what the fuck? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it, <clears throat> it's not hard to follow though. No, so no, The no. way they did it is actually pretty, uh, Sidney Lumet's a, a hell of a fucking director by the way. Yeah, He's the way. now, but 
Uh, oh, is he? Yeah, that was his last movie, actually. I oh, read shit. up on it. Yeah. And I was like, oh, wow, I didn't know he did this. But, uh, <clears throat> okay. But yeah, the way that it was and how the edit was and how they shot it was pretty fucking amazing, by the way. Yeah, you're not confused. Yeah, no, it doesn't. It's, it's able to do it. Like, it's all, the whole thing is like within a week. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah. But, um, so like I said, he had finally agreed to do it. But he was like, I don't think I can do it because it's mom and dad's jewelry store. And then he's like, relax. They're not even there on Saturday morning. It's some other lady they hired. Yeah. And he, and he tells him that insurance covers whatever they lose. So yeah. it's like, no, it's like a victimless crime is what he's tr- trying to sell it to him as. Yeah. He's like, it's yeah. safe. Yeah. 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 And of course, he's like, we know how to, we know the place. We both worked there growing up and shit. And we get in and get out because we know where everything is at. Yeah. And of course, uh, a robbery never goes as planned. <laughs> Right. So Fucking heist, bro, goes wrong. Bro. Yeah, exactly. Uh, but Hank, the younger brother, he was the one that was going to go in and rob the store because, you know, the older one was like, they're going to recognize me because I did a lot of work in the area. And But he's so scared that he hires a buddy because yeah. he's like, I can't do it, dude. I'm, I'm scared or whatever. But he does that without telling him. Mm-hmm. And so the, the buddy's supposed to go in there, you know, just kind of get all the jewelry, the cash, and get out of there. No shooting, blah, blah, blah. Like I said, of course. And again, this is in the movie at the very beginning. Yeah. You see the robbery, like Leaf said, right after the fucking porn scene, <laughs> which was hot, by the way. Yeah, it was pretty hot. Uh, and then, of course, like I said, it goes wrong. Obviously, shots get fired. They both get the robber and the person working get shot. And uh, just so happens to be the person working behind the counter is their mom. It's yeah. not the lady they hired. Yeah, she was covering for for some whatever reason. Yeah, she had uh, some sort of like appointment. Right. And so, obviously, they end up finding out their mom is on a... She's basically brain dead whenever they whenever they get her. So, they killed their mom, essentially. Yeah. Um, and then the friend is also dead, too, that he hired. Yeah, because the mom actually had a gun in a drawer. Yeah. And while he was trying to bust open some other the jewelry stuff to get it out because the key wasn't working or whatever. She shoots him. Mm-hmm. And then um, then he gets his, he finally gets up and he shoots her and then it's fucking crazy. And it's then, a wild yeah, thing, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it goes back and forth and then she finally shoots him completely dead. Yeah. And he falls through the door and then that's when Hank sees, he's like, oh, fuck. And he takes off in the car that he's in. Mm-hmm. And then, um, yeah, they rush the mom to the hospital, but she's like on... Like she's in, brain dead. Yeah, yeah, they yeah. They, they're just keeping her alive with machines. <clears throat> so the yeah. dad's got to make a decision. Yeah, and shit. The family, I guess, got to make a decision. But it comes yeah. down to the dad making the decision, right? Yeah. So obviously they get very distraught over that whole thing because yeah. now their mom's dead and they have to go to the funeral and all that. And Hank, the, like, is the younger brother who's the, kind of the baby and the bitch. He's mm-hmm. all he's super upset about everything and. And he's like, quit being a pussy, basically, and all that. But Mm -hmm. they're in a world of shit because, you know, there's things that tie them back to the murder and all all that, the robbery. So it's like, there's all kinds of shit. And like I said, this is one family, so it's a fucked up family. Yeah, for sure. (laughs) So, you know, there's other things, like, in the movie, too, that I I won't say, you know, in case you want to watch it or whatever. But that's basically the gist of the movie. And like I said, I can't believe I've never seen this before. Yeah, me neither, man. Especially with the cast that was in there. Yeah. What the fuck, bro? How did I not... The way that it twists and turns and, mm-hmm. and the father, you know, gets involved, of course. Mm-hmm. Uh, I got to say, this was really good. Yeah, it was. I was like, what the fuck? I don't understand. This movie's pretty fucking good. Yeah, it kept me, like, in it, in it, man. I was just like, man, what the fuck's going to happen? Dude? Yeah. Like, and um, I thought maybe, yeah, it was, it was pretty crazy, dude. Yeah, the, the older brother, Andy, it goes actually insane at the end of the movie. <laughs> yeah, he so, goes off, bro. Yeah. And then you find out that, well, I won't say anything. Anymore. Yeah, yeah. Don't give away. If y'all want to watch it, yeah. But I mean, it was great, dude. It was, yeah. Yeah. I enjoyed it a lot. Yeah, I liked it a lot. It was a good one to 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 uh, our second one. Any movie that has some sort of like heist in it, I'm in, bro. Yeah. Even though this is like a small one, but it was like, and it went fucking wrong from the start. But I was like, yeah, let's let's do it, bro. Yeah. Let's let's knock off a store, bro. Yeah. Let's yeah. Let's do it, dude. (laughs) Make this room into a fucking all plans everywhere, bro. Yeah. I'll be like, oh shit, (laughs) we're on stream. That's nothing. <laughs> yeah. We're, we're the world's dumbest criminals, bro. Like, they're like, uh, th- we think it was these guys, and they, like, come in here, bro, and the plants are all over the wall. And be like, I just, that was just a map that I drew. Like, yeah. treasure hunt. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> Stupid asses. Yeah. Uh, but it was good, man. So if you have never seen it, um, check it out. Let us know what you think. 
2007 American crime thriller film, Before the Devil Knows You're Dead. Really good, man. Yeah. I like I, it. I like We'll it. see what the next one next week is. We'll keep it in suspense. Right. Because to be honest with you, I don't even know what it's going to be. <laughs> so there you go. Give it a shot, man. Let us know. All right, dude. Uh, a couple other things to get through before we jump over to, you know, all the sports goodness, everything. We have the, the best fucking sport back started. But I want to say this real quick, Leaf. You mentioned this, and I actually saw this as well. <clears throat> there was a one of the most famous movie props in history, literally, from the movie Titanic. Now, if I say the movie Titanic, what do you think would be the most famous prop from that movie because well, i mean there's a lot obviously, yeah there's but, a lot but it's like it's one of the ones that's like controversial towards the end of yeah, the film and a lot of people would say the jewel at the end oh, that's true but that, but then uh, yeah the second one would be that the door that uh yeah that uh jack and what's her name what's rose. Her? rose yeah uh, well rose was floating on yeah rose jack was, was hanging on for his dear fucking life <laughs> yeah jack was in the freezing ass water <laughs> yeah everybody's yeah. like bitch move over let him on the door yeah there's, yeah, the big controversy is could he have fit on there, and it clearly shows that two people could fit on this door. Well, they did a, a test, actually. James Cameron did a okay. scientific test with about that, actually. Of course, James Cameron. He's like, let's fucking test it then, because yeah. I'm James Cameron. Yeah, yeah. Let me go 30,000 feet deep in the sea again next week. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, so they did that test or whatever, and the, there was not enough buoyancy. I guess that's the word. Yeah, I don't think it would float. To, is the to, thing? Yeah, they yeah. could fit on there. It just wouldn't float. Yeah, he could fit. It just wasn't going to stay up, stay up. Right. Well, the the actual wooden door. Like I said, this is an iconic prop. It hit the auction block last week, bro. Um, and this door, I wish I would. I wish I had owned it. Yeah. To be honest, because the the like I said, it went up for auction. Seven hundred and eighteen thousand goddamn dollars for the door, bro. Yeah, for just a. It was in the movie. It's a famous piece of part of the movie, obviously. But holy shit! Bidding was started at sixty thousand dollars, and uh, like I said, seven hundred and eighteen thousand dollars. Who the fuck has seven hundred eighteen thousand dollars to buy a broken ass movie prop, a broken piece of wood that's just fucking looks like the Titanic door, bro, that they broke. On yeah. purpose, because it, it was after the sinking. So they're like, it's got to be battered and broken. But yeah, Rose floats on it. What the fuck? I don't know. Yeah, that's a ton of cash for something like that, for sure. It's like, eight foot long, by the way. Right. Like, where are you going to put that? Yeah. I was going to say, where the fuck you <laughs> Well, do if they it? have 700 grand to drop on a movie problem, I'm sure they got plenty of room at their house. That's true. <laughs> that's true. <laughs> Probably, I'm just going to... They put it as their front door. And you're like, what the fuck? <laughs> yeah, it's all broken. Right? Hmm? I could break into this house. Either. Yeah, I'd be like, all right. <laughs> <laughs> I don't understand that, but hey, some people are into this shit, man. Yeah. I spend a ton of money, but I mean, if that sold for 700K, you're right, man. What the fuck would that heart of the ocean jewel go for? Yeah, no shit, dude. Oh my God. 700K for the movie Titanic's door. Eight foot long. I didn't realize it was that fucking big, actually. Yeah. I guess it's a full ass door, bro. Yeah. Yikes. So there you go. James yeah. Cameron's like, what the fuck? Is there like a movie prop or sports memorabilia that would be something like I, I, you drop if you had the cash? If, like, if money I was no money. object, right. like if you were Jim Irsay, bro. Like, yeah. he, he, <laughs> right. And then you just have money to piss away. <laughs> right. Like, is there a, that's a, that's piece a hard... of memorabilia or movie, me anything like from Star Wars, whatever your favorite shit is, and then, or yeah. from sports? Like, well, if you're doing so sports wise, I would say, like, probably, God, that's a hard question because there's so much shit. Mm, yeah. I mean, that's one you have to think about. But off the top of my head, I would probably try to get, like, I don't know, like Mickey Man a bat from Mickey Mantle. Yeah. Or Babe Ruth or something. Anything they have in the Hall of Fame. Right, yeah. That's worth a shit ton of money, but you have it. I mean, that's pretty cool. Yeah. Like, you know, Roger Maris has his bat in the Hall of Fame. That'd be fucking cool to have. Right. Just anything like that, like famous in the, I'm thinking baseball just because we're in baseball season, but there's not really a lot of like football, like the, I don't know, I'm not big on like game use football. I'm just like, who gives a fuck? There's yeah. a million footballs out there. Right. There's only one butt bat that was used to fucking hit an iconic home run or something, you know? Right. Yeah, exactly. Um, 
Yeah, I'm not gonna wear like kickers cleats or or like put hang those up or anything. <laughs> we get those Joe Theismann's football pants when he broke his femur, bro. Yeah, <laughs> I'm like, oh shit, he, he died. Like blood all over. <laughs> yeah. No, I didn't. I wouldn't want that. But, but um, as far as movies go, Jesus. Oh yeah. I mean, if we're thinking nostalgia, maybe like maybe like Indiana Jones whip that he used. Yeah, something like that. Right. That'd be know. cool. Like something like that would be cool to have. Yeah, for yeah. sure. Yeah. Or like a uh, the prop light sa- lightsaber, Luke Skywalker's yeah, lightsaber, or something, that'd be or cool. Vader's lightsaber, whatever. Yeah. Something like that. Something like that. Yeah. I mean, we're talking like these things are probably worth a fuck ton of money. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> if you yeah. can verify that it's the right, re- like it has to be the real deal. Right. Yeah. You'd have to get it. Like the big places always do that shit. Right. You know, they do their due diligence, but um, and I also would want Harrison Ford to sign next to it or something yeah if he was willing to because he seems like he's kind of a grumpy old guy yeah he kind of is dude. yeah but hey which is fine it's like 80 yeah yeah so it's I'm like, not just but i think fine. he was that way all the time but, <laughs> i don't know <laughs> but i mean when he was doing Indiana jones he's already like 35 40 right <laughs> so something like that if you had the cash uh man sports memorabilia i feel like there's something else out there that i would totally want yeah that I just can't think because it's off the top of my head. It's so hard to think about. There's so many fucking moments in my life, dude. I mean, even last year with the Rangers World Series, surely there's something that I'd get from that. I mean, that oh, was such yeah. an iconic run in the playoffs, bro. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> That's recent, you know, but something like that. What about you? Any sports thing that you could think of? Off yeah, the top I'm of your trying head? to think, man. But it would have to be something like that. Like, I mean, it's hard to think about. Yeah, like. Um, Like yeah, like a Babe Ruth or Lou Gehrig bat or something like that. Because I I like I grew up, growing up I was a huge like Babe Ruth and Lou Gehrig. Like I read a bunch Gehrig, of Gehrig Gehrig Gehrig. What did I say? Gehrig. Oh, okay. <laughs> Gehrig. Um, <clears throat> Lou Gehrig. Yeah, I read all their like biogra- biographies and shit and everything about them when I was growing up, going to school. And, Murderers Row, bro. Yeah. I mean, those are iconic baseball moments and teams back in the day. Yeah. I mean, it's so fascinating to me to go back and watch, like, Babe Ruth at bat. We have that on video, and it's just like, I mean, the game's obviously way different, but it's just like that guy was arguably one of the best of all time. At the time, he was. Yeah. That was cool, like, when we went to, for my 40th, we went to tour Fenway and stuff, and I was like, man, I just wish our team had this kind of history, bro. Yeah. Because it's so long ago, bro, like 1900s. 1912. (laughs) Yeah, 1912. (laughs) And so... But that's that, that old school stuff like that always fascinates me, man. Yeah. So. Well, those you know the, up there in the Northeast, I mean, they were obviously that part of America was established well before yeah. anything over here. So right. that's why they have all that history, and I am jealous. You go tour like I toured Yankee Stadium in Fenway, and mm-hmm. yeah, it's the same. I mean, they have a museum at Yankee Stadium. It's like the history is so amazing here. It's it's unreal. Right. You know. So I mean, yeah, because the Rangers are relatively a new team still. Like I mean, yeah. they've only been around for fuck fifty years. So like as the Rangers, they've been around for fifty two, right? Yeah, it's this not a long 53rd. fucking time. No, it's not. <laughs> and when you're talking about nineteen hundreds and shit. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So. Yeah, but anyway, yeah, yeah. What would you What would you buy out there? Yeah, leave a comment. Yeah, leave and a, a comment. like and a like. subscribe and all that. Yeah, we're almost to 200 subscribers. That'd be cool. Yeah. I'm not doing a bomb bet, though. <laughs> Y'all can go fuck yourself. Yeah, really. <laughs> okay. Um, moving on. Let's see here. This other thing uh, that happened this past week, which was actually, I never really knew about any of this or whatever. I just saw, like, everybody else probably. That um, out of nowhere, because, again, I don't follow this type of stuff, and I don't really know, but out of nowhere, like, Homeland Security raided Sean P. Diddy Combs homes, bro. One in L.A. and like a couple in Miami or something like that. Yeah. Um, and it was like, whoa, what's going on here? And it really, it really, the only thing we know is that he was all raided, facing multiple civil lawsuits, uh, claiming that he raped or sexually assaulted several victims over the past few decades, as well as sex trafficking. It's fucking wild, bro. Yeah. This is one of the biggest names in, like, you know, early 2000s. I mean. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, as far as. In, I mean, he just made he made a ton of fucking money on just doing music. Oh, yeah. Bad Boy Records or whatever it is and 
all that stuff. And uh, for him to be doing this kind of shit, it's kind of crazy. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, and that's the thing too. It's like, okay, if they raided your fucking homes, they have, they have significant evidence. I would imagine. Right. Otherwise yeah. they're not going to do that. They're probable cause or whatever. They're trying to corroborate like what they have versus evidence in the homes. Yeah. Cause they don't raid your home, bro. Unless they, that's some serious, they fucking raided with guns and shit, dude. Yeah, like yeah, fucking yeah. federal, like, yeah, this shit. is like serious fucking shit. Yeah. And uh, so they raided his homes, and then we really don't know much because it's an ongoing investigation. So they're yeah. not going to tell you, you know what, you know what all is going on or whatever. They're just raiding for evidence. Mm-hmm. And um, obviously, they he came out, or an attorney for Sean P. D. Combs came out, and they deny everything, of and they course. say it's a fucking trying to get people trying to get money, and it's all disgusting, and he's not a part of it, and whatever. But. I got to say, bro, if they're raiding your home like that, they've something's up. There's no way they're just going to do that and be like, okay, he's innocent, actually. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, that, I can't wait to see what unfolds in this because, I mean, like, it's, there's, like. Uh, there's a lot of shit against him. Yeah. There's, Gang rape. And there's a lot of people coming out saying, yeah, there's been some weird shit going on around him for a long time and all this stuff. And mm-hmm. So. But um, as of Tuesday, this is what I read in here. Uh, he has he or any family members haven't have uh, haven't been arrested, and they haven't had the ability to travel restricted in any way at all. So, if nothing was dis- nothing was discovered in there, then I don't know what's going to happen. But yeah, well, there was a case that back in November that I'm reading here that he settled with some girl out of court. Yeah. So I, I, not the first time. And then now since that, since they settled, there's three other women that came forward with lawsuits. And then there, the two of the women said that they were teenagers at the time the assaults happened. So great. There's a lot of stuff coming out now. Of course, when something, some celebrity gets put in the news like this, then like all these people come out and they're like, Oh yeah, I, I remember back in right. here, this. Yeah. So you're going to have to sort through all that stuff. But, uh, I don't know, man. If they if they're raiding your house with guns, they got something, bro. I would imagine. Like they got something that's going to stick for sure, and they're just confirming. But yeah, the one of the lawsuits was the the sexual abuse, rape, and sex trafficking. Say so that that's wild, dude. Sex trafficking. That is wild. Yeah, that is wild. Like, what do you need to do that for, bro? Like, you're, first of all, you're P Diddy, bro. You can bang anybody. I, I would imagine. I mean, I mean, it can't be hard. Yeah. Uh, I don't know what I uh, do. Look, man, these these fucking rich ass people that are in clubs of, that we are not in and worlds that we're not gonna ever be in. They do some <laughs> fucked up shit, man. Yeah, it is true. They and just get bored with regular sex. I so guess. Like, I guess I'm gonna sex traffic now. <laughs> yeah. I'm be like, I want to sell people back and forth. This is fun. Yeah. Yeah. I mean that's a thing. Yeah, especially I mean definitely a thing, I and mean, we've we've heard about that and seen it. even here. Yeah, oh yeah, even here. I remember a story here. There was a 15 year old at a Dallas Mavericks game who got abducted. Yeah, she went to the bathroom and like her her dad was just waiting for her to come back, and right. she never did. It never came back, and then they I think they found they, her. They found her in like Oklahoma City or something. But it was like she was got yeah. put into like trafficking. Yeah, and I was like, what the fuck? Yeah, they found her at some hotel up there in yeah. Oklahoma, dude. Like I was like, what the fuck, dude? So I mean, I was, that happens here even. Yeah. So like people just looking to abduct young girls and whatever or boys too, probably shit, and just put them in. It's scary to think about, dude. So that shit's real. Yeah, that ain't fucking fake, bro. Yeah, but if Pete Diddy's involved in all this, and like I'm like you, like what the fuck are you doing, bro? You yeah. have so much money. Like he's 54 too, bro. It's like, bro, just you could buy whatever the fuck you want, dude. I mean, you don't have to do go it to anything. Vegas, go to the Bunny Ranch, and buy yeah all of them and do it legally and do it legally. Yeah, yeah, it's legal, guys. Yeah, it is. I would spend a lot of time at the Bunny Ranch. I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> I'm not gonna yeah. lie. If I had that, there ain't no goddamn way I'm getting married. I'll tell you that. Yeah, you're just fucking signing away half your goddamn checks right there. Yeah, you're done if you do that, bro. Yeah, I'll be like, no, I'm gonna go to the ranch. (laughs) Yeah, where they where they fly out there, bro. Where where they expect me to just go there and then leave right after, and I don't have to worry about it. Yeah, that'd be that's perfect. Oh, there'd be a private jet scheduled for me from where I'm at to that place every week. Oh yeah, weekly, uh, where it's legal. Like I said, I'm not going to get in trouble. Exactly. You know? Uh, Man, that's crazy, dude. I guess more is going to come out, obviously. The uh, investigation's still going on, so we don't know much beyond the fact that he was 
it was all raided and everything, and he's denying everything. But, man, doesn't look good. So I certainly wouldn't want to be involved in that or have my home raided for that reason. So, anyways. Uh, speaking of another, like, another music thing, uh, who we actually talked about this person before. Uh, you brought up a story in a f- previous episode about this person because uh, apparently she's a piece of shit. Lizzo? Oh, yeah. Yeah, um, she is a piece of shit. Yeah, because it came out that she was like even sexually abusing dancers and fat shaming them when I'm like, well, you're a whale too. <laughs> yeah, you're just, you're probably fatter than them. <laughs> yeah, there's no way you're not fatter than them. Have you seen a recent picture of her? She's still fat, bro. Yeah, she's insane. Yeah, I, she's crazy, dude. That chick is crazy. Look, I'll, all I'm saying that I'm being mean that way because she's fat shaming people, and I'm like, you're a fucking fatty. Yeah, yeah. If you're doing that, you're, there's something wrong with you. Yeah, like don't be, don't be like that. But anyways, um, she has recently posted this week about how uh, she has, I guess, announced her departure from entertainment. Uh, she mm-hmm. says she's getting tired of putting up with being dragged by everyone in my life and on the internet. And I mean, like, y- you did that to people. You did that. Yeah. If you're getting <laughs> this backlash, it's because you're stupid. <clears throat> yeah. All I want is to make music and make people happy and help the world be a little bit better than how I found it. But I'm starting to feel like the world doesn't want me in it. That's correct. I'm constantly. <laughs> <laughs> on the, on my, my, that's my opinion. <laughs> Let me just say that. <laughs> if I never saw Lizzo or heard her again, I'm fine. Yeah, and they put her in Star Wars, for God's sakes. Thanks, Disney, you yeah. fucking losers. <laughs> um, I'm constantly up against lies being told about me for clout and views being the butt of the joke every single time because of how I look. My character being picked apart by people who don't know me and disrespecting my name. I didn't sign up for this shit. I quit. Good riddance. Yeah, I mean, look, like I said, she did this shit to people. Yeah. Uh, I mean, uh, that's what we heard. Yes. And. Yeah, a lot of her dancers came out and said she. More than one. Yeah, more. This was multiple. Yeah. Like, they, she, it was crazy, the accusations, too. Mm -hmm. And, and they're saying, like, she's constantly fucking berating us about our weight. And she made us, we had a strip club made us eating bananas out of fucking. That's right. Yeah. The strippers' vaginas and shit. Yeah. And we're like, uh, so this shit got money. Fat hun- shaming yeah. people when she's fat herself. That yeah. makes no sense to me. Maybe y'all go to the gym together and help each other out yeah. instead of fucking If going you want to make the world other. a better place, maybe treat people like you want to be treated. Yeah, exactly. That's all you have to do. <laughs> I mean, that's the golden, like the, lo- the oldest rule in the book, dude. Yeah, if you want respect, you got to give it first. Yeah. And nobody's going to do it if you're out here fat shaming your dancers and you're like, I didn't say that, and then Eat just that banana to, out of that pussy. Yeah. It's like, what the fuck? <laughs> yeah. So, fuck you. I'm glad she, uh, if she, she ain't going to fucking leave. She's stupid. She's just yeah, saying that was, shit. She probably was drunk and did that. Yeah. Or something. But if she does, I'm fine with that. Yeah, I'd be happy, too. They put her in Star Wars. Like, and, and the wrong character, too, because the only thing that she could play at Star Wars would be, like, Jabba the Hutt. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah. she was just some other character. Right. No, Disney. They, and Jack Black was in with her. Jack Black was like, she's a wonderful person. I'm like, Jack, please don't lie, bro. Yeah. See, I wouldn't make it in Hollywood because I'll tell the truth about everybody. Like, yeah. That guy's a piece of shit over there. Yeah, I was like, I just done a movie with this guy. He's a fucking dick. Yeah, I would. I'd be like, <laughs> I, I don't give a fuck about people. Like, hopefully, I'd never have to work with him again. But if the pay is good, I will. But fuck that guy. Yeah. I'm sure that happens a lot. Yeah. But yeah, the uh, we, may be, we may never have to see her again, bro. But I think you're right, bro. She's not going to quit. She's talking out her fat ass. That's what she's doing. <laughs> She's going to stay fat and sing <laughs> stupid pop songs and be mean to people for the rest of her life until she dies. Well, she's always going to get hate on the internet. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, I was about to say, first of all, have you? is this your first time on the internet, bitch? Yeah, Jesus, we get hate immediately, like, no matter what. <laughs> and we're fucking just two Joe Blows over here <laughs> fucking around. Yeah, like, what the fuck? Yeah. That's, how, that's what the internet is. Yeah, pretty much. I thought that was funny, though. Yeah. So there you go, man. I wanted to update you on your girl, Lizzo, that you, like I said, brought up in a previous episode about how she's a piece of shit. <laughs> yeah, she is. <laughs> uh, the Eskimo Bros podcast does not like Lizzo. Yeah. I, I, dude, honestly, I couldn't even tell you if I listened to a Lizzo song. Ever. I, I think I've heard, like, pieces on TikTok. If, what, if it was in a TikTok, that, but I've never heard a whole song. I've I never na- searched. I could name one. That's for goddamn sure. Yeah, I've never gone out and actively searched for a Lizzo song so yeah. I could listen to it in my truck. Yeah, me neither. I'm not going to do that, ever. Yeah, I'm not going to. Well, she's gone. Hopefully. Hopefully. Yeah. Yeah, stay true to that, bitch. (laughs) 
Yeah, don't backtrack now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay. Um, hey, we also we also have an RIP segment this week. Unfortunately, uh, there was another one too that I to- f- totally forgot about last week, dude. I fucked up. I think I know who you're talking about too. Yeah, I, I fucked up. Well, maybe I'll look at it for next okay, week. We do it, but this week was uh, Lewis Gossett Jr. passed away at 87 years old. Uh, obviously an actor and uh, a great actor too. By the way, he was in a, a lot of movies. Yeah, a lot of shit. Tons of shit, dude. He yeah. won a ton of awards too. Yeah, he won an Academy Award <clears throat> for supporting actor, an, mm-hmm. an office, uh, an officer, and a gentleman. Uh, this yeah. guy was massive in my childhood, dude. Like, cause there's a ton of movies like Iron, those Iron Eagle movies. Bro. Iron Eagle, dude. I watched the shit out of the first Iron Eagle all the time, dude. And then there's that movie Enemy Mine. Mm-hmm. That was a big one for me when I was a kid. Yep, Dennis Quaid and, and him in it. He was that. He played that alien dude, so you couldn't really tell it was him. Yeah, unless you knew. But yeah, there was so much uh, shit. Digstown was another movie I I wore out when I was a kid watching. That was a great fucking movie. He did a shit ton of TV too, man. Yeah. Yeah, he was in everything, bro, pretty much. Yeah. And he worked. He's got stuff coming out still, like this year, and there's mm-hmm. another movie. Like, But I, I haven't seen anything he's done recently, I don't think. But Yeah. Unless it was like a small role. But. <clears throat> well, he was, like I said, 87 years old. Yeah. But yeah, I remember him in The Officer and a Gentleman. Iron Eagle. Yep. Like you mentioned. Um, and then um, I do, yeah, he was in Blue Chips, too. I remember yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. God, that movie was amazing. He's a smaller part, but yeah, he was in that. But yeah, a lot of lot of a uh, lot of great movies. And like I said, if you you see the Lewis Gossett, you'll recognize him immediately. Yeah, just because like we said, he was in so much stuff and he's everywhere. And uh, eighty seven years old. Um, I don't think a cause. I didn't see a cause of death. I think he was already, you know, had some things going on anyways. But eighty seven years old, like we say, it's it's just probably just. At that age, you know, your body's like, all right, we're done, bro. Yeah. <clears throat> I don't know if we'll make it to 87. That's for damn sure. No, no, no shot. <laughs> <laughs> I hope we do, but I don't know, man. If we're up here still doing the, th- the podcast at 87, we're going to be really bad. <laughs> yeah. Something's going to have to happen, bro. We'll be on like the fucking like, machines or whatever, helping our livers out, bro. And be <laughs> yeah. like, hey, guys, we're live. Yeah. <laughs> we got an issue here. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, RIP, sir. Another good one gone, bro. Yep. Damn. Okay. Let's move on, dude. Or do you have anything before we get to sports? No, that's all I got. Okay. Obviously, a couple things from the NFL this past week, uh, actually, which kind of surprised me because, uh, like I said, the NFL is an off season. We're right before kind of the draft next month. So, you know, teams are just doing that and – doing their evaluations or whatever. But the owners also do meet before every year and uh, go over some, like, new <sighs> rules, basically, new proposals that get put in by uh, the competition committee and all that. And uh, each proposal has to be pr- approved by two-thirds of owners, so 75% in order for those to go into, to, into effect. A lot of the times you won't hear – you know, they don't make like big headlines every year unless they're like super, you know, something that's definitely something that's definitely going to like affect the game. Okay. One of the big ones that was approved was the ban of the, of the hip drop tackle, which of uh, players have gotten hurt doing like being hip drop tackled from behind really. Yeah, it's broken like running backs ankles and shit like that. But I'm like, holy shit, dude! How the fuck, as a defensive player, do you even tackle somebody now? Yeah, it's weird. You um, can't grab their horse collar. You can't grab them by the hip now. What are you supposed to just let them go? <laughs> yeah, I don't know, dude. It's ridiculous. Um, I mean, I, I get it's injury, but like, it's yeah, football. Yeah, that's what I was about to say. This is a physical game. People are getting hit every play. The injuries are going to happen. Uh, these guys make millions and millions of dollars. They're going to be fine. Yeah. I understand pre- protecting like concussions and stuff because that's dangerous to the brain and stuff. But I mean, you're going to tear your knee up. You're going to ankles, and you're going to have injuries through this whole fucking career that you decided to play. 
So when they're starting to take away certain things like that, I know it's, I don't know, man. Uh, yeah, like you said, but how else are they supposed to tackle? It's just supposed to, not everything's a clean fucking tackle every time. Like, I, I just don't get, I mean, like I like, said, we're, like we're saying, it's football. I mean, this is this happens. Well, they had to relearn how to tackle people anyway since with the whole <clears throat> head thing or whatever, and whatever you know, how they, have, they had to lead with their shoulder now and stuff yeah, like, and all that. Used to, you could lead with your head and put it in their chest, and so you can't do that now. No. And so they had to relearn how to do Now they're going to have to learn how to tackle a different way now. It's weird. It's, good. it's fucking... <clears throat> and I did hear, though, that they probably wouldn't call it the flags a lot, but... I don't know, man, because, like, like I said, how do you... I mean, I could see this potentially just being called in a big moment in a game and fucking the team over because it's going to be a 15 yard penalty. Yeah, that's and when. Yeah, that's when it would get called. Yeah, it's like in the fucking Super Bowl. Right. And you're like, what? We haven't seen this all year. The guy literally is just tackling somebody, not necessarily trying to hurt the guy, just trying to bring him down. Yeah. So I don't get it why they like uh, why they think this is a good idea. I guess we'll see how how much they enforce it. Dude, yeah. I, if I look, if you're if you have a kid out there that plays football, play offense. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. play offense. Yeah, I don't know why anybody would pursue a def- defensive position, dude. No, yeah. yeah, I mean, look, even the defensive linemen, bro, when they get back there to 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 the quarterback, I mean, they literally have to just push or breathe on him because if you do anything else, you're gonna fucking flag. Yeah, we've seen that a million times. Yeah, hundred percent. Or they're like they barely. Or they do tackle him, and then the ref throws a flag and be like, he landed on him. I'm like, well, what the fuck else is he supposed to do, bro? His body weight's carrying him. Yeah, when you are got all your momentum going forward, it's hard to pull back. You and can't. Sometimes that's just going to happen, yeah. These guys are like 300 pounds, bro. It's not like they're small guys. Yeah. It's all muscle. Yeah. So, like, all these rules and protecting and NFL is, like, heading to a direction of, like, dude, oh, my God. In a few years, are we going to just play flag football? Yeah. I mean, that's what it looks like. Like, they already got the stupid-ass Pro Bowl game flag football, which no one watches. Yeah. And yeah. and I'm, like I'm saying, dude, it's a yeah. physical fucking game, dude. Yeah, exactly. Like you said, I can understand protecting the head. That's brain stuff. hmm But, I mean, running backs, when you're a running back or whatever, you're, you're getting hit every play. I mean, you're going to get dragged down, dude. Yeah. I mean, it is what it is. Yeah, I don't get it. Yeah. I mean, it's part of – injuries are part of the game. I mean, I know you you can do what you can to prevent it, but when you're changing the game this much, it's pretty wild, dude. Yeah. For a game that is all physical all the time. Uh, it makes I, no sense. I agree. I don't I don't like that one. Uh, like I said, I guess we'll see how much they enforce it, but I could see somebody getting stopped or whatever. You need a big stop on a third and seven or something, and running back looks like he's about to break free, and then a linebacker grabs him and pulls him down, and then they call it. Yeah. And you're just like, <laughs> fuck this, dude. Yeah. Yeah. I can see it. It's definitely going to be maddening. I yeah. guarantee it. Yeah, it's going to happen. Um, the other big one that I actually like, because we were, we were, we were, like I said, we were live for every Thursday night NFL game last year. Mm-hmm. And I think all, what was there, like 16 of those? Because the last week they don't have one, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, I think all of them, literally the, the kickoff at the beginning is a touchback. Yeah, every, every one of them. I think every was. one of them. We, that was kind of like a running joke that <laughs> yeah. we were like, yeah, shocker. Yeah. Uh, they've approved the the changing of I, – I don't know if it's officially going to happen, like if it's going to be all the way out. They're definitely going to try it, right? It's basically the what the XFL does. Uh, there's a, a kickoff. There's a landing zone, like from the – I think it's from the goal line to like the 10 or 15 or something. Mm-hmm. And the kickoff team and the blocking team can't move until the player catches the ball. Mm. And then they can go. This is what the UFL or XFL has been doing. Oh, okay. So they, they kick it off. It, it, it provides for a little bit of strategy. I have, like, a map pulled up here. And so, uh, you, like I said, you kick it in the, uh, the landing zone. If it hits the uh, the touchback or whatever, it's like you get it at the 35 or some shit. Okay. Kind of like you kick it out of bounds. Yeah. Uh, but this will hopefully help kickoffs actually mean something now, where, like, now, like, what we've seen is just they kick it out. Because, you know what, by the way, they could fix all this shit by just moving the kickback 10 yards. Yeah, like they used to have it. Yeah. Yeah. But they're going to try this out, um, which is going to promote more returns is what the goal is. 
And like I said, the XFL is already doing this. So you had plenty of returns when you were kicking it from before. Yeah. Where you were kicking it from. It's so stupid. Well, that this is to prev- like prevent like more yeah, high speed collisions. Yeah, they used to have a running start. Yeah. Even in, or whatever, but and so that's what they're they're doing um, with the kickoff rule. Like I said, there's video out there of the XFL already doing this. It looks like it'll be okay, but I, I'm okay with it as long as we get more returns. Like, I just hated the, the, the kickoffs that are always out. I'm like, what's the point of kicking off right now, dude? Just start at the fucking 25. Dude. Yeah, don't even kick it. Yeah. And so hopefully they got that message loud and clear, and this is what we're getting. All you need in the NFL now is a punting. Yeah. You don't need a kickoff. Landing zone is from the goal line to the 20, sorry. Oh, okay. So that's where you can kick so, it. They can't move until they if they're in that zone. So the, there's a there's a start line for the kickoff team, and then a setup zone for the blocking team. Mm-hmm. The the players can't move until the returner catches the ball. Well, that gives the kick the receiving team a, t- a huge advantage. Not really. It's not as much, much as you think. No. No, because the setup zone is already the players are at the like the forty. Oh, so is the kicker behind them? Yeah. That's weird. Yeah. So it's not as much as you think. It's just less collision, a high right. speed collision. Oh, okay, gotcha. So it's not like as much as you think. They're not like at the thirty five on the other side and the kicker. The yeah, guy like, catch, that guy's gonna run for forty yards. Yeah, for the guy catch catches sort of the fifty every time. I'm like <laughs> Jesus. Yeah, I was like, okay. Yeah. So no, they're at the forty, and then the setup zone is right there too. So they're already kind of close to each other. Yeah. And then the returner just you're able to run it, but you know it's it's kind of like the same. It, you you collide with everything like it would be if they're running full speed already. I got you, yeah. Yeah. But promoting more kick returns, I'm good with that because, like we said, it, it you can strategize it's, it with a little bit. And, yeah, and it's and boring. The, the other thing is, too, you cannot surprise onside. Oh, okay. You have to announce that you're going to do an onside kick. Oh, well, that's fucking dumb. That is kind of dumb because those surprise onsides have played a role sometimes. Yeah. Like Rare, it, but. I've seen them where, like, at it, it's the second half, you know, when the other team's kicking off and they look like they're about to – Boot it downfield, and he just goes. And yeah, it. Sean Payton did it in the Super Bowl. Yeah, yeah, stuff like that. That's exciting shit. Yeah, don't take that away. Fuck, that's dumb. Yeah, well, you have to announce it because uh, uh, you a kicker would be by himself back there and kick it ten yards and be like, "I got it." <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so you gotta you gotta say that you're gonna do an onside. So there's a couple things, and we'll learn more as we move along with uh, kind of what what. Uh, how this will look. Like I said, it's already been done in the XFL though. So if you want to look at it, there's videos out there of how it works. And um, I guess I kind of like it, but at the same time, I'm, I feel like this is maybe a little too complicated. Just move it back 10 yards guys. Yeah. And then we're good. Yeah. It makes, that makes but more sense to me. It's then. more, it's more the whole thing though. Less, less collisions, yeah, yeah, yeah. less, you know, let's keep not getting injured. Less physical. In a physical game. Pretty much the only thing they need to do now for protect quarterbacks is just put them in bubble wrap. Yeah. Because they, you can't touch the fucking quarterback now, and even though they all still get hurt. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All the big ones got hurt last year pretty much. <clears throat> so there you go. There's the big ones that the, the – uh, like I said, the owners approved these changes. So we'll see how it uh, how it looks going. And there's a, bun- there's a bunch more, but they're not like big as this. Right. So <clears> – <throat> Yeah, we'll see how that goes. And uh, speaking of the other thing in the NFL, um, I try not to mention this team anymore, I promise, but the Mm -hmm. Dallas Cowboys came up in news again. It doesn't look like they are going to rework or re-sign, extend Dak Prescott before the season, which everybody thought they would because of the $59 cap hit. And uh, basically, they said, we have a mutual understanding of the contract situation. We are where we are, locked and loaded for this year. No indication that a deal is coming. This could all be bullshit. Who knows? But if Dak Prescott doesn't sign a deal or an extension, then he will be a free agent after this year and be able to test free agency. And as a Cowboys fan, I'm like, please. Yeah, just let him walk. Let him go, bro. Yeah, Tons of teams have done it for quarterbacks that have been there. A long time that were better than Dak Prescott, like Aaron Rodgers left the Packers. Yeah, you know there's been more. Tom Brady left the Patriots. I mean, those were Super Bowl winning quarterbacks. This guy is just another Kirk Cousins. Right, exactly. Who's Kirk's on his third team now. Right. Yep. Guy says he doesn't like money. <laughs> we know you're lying, Kirk. <laughs> yeah, right. But 
another another thing I saw is uh, if we go through this season and Dak Prescott becomes a free agent, the number one target was what I saw was Washington. Really? Because of Dan Quinn. Oh, ah, okay. No, nah, I don't want that guy. <laughs> what if you don't have a this choice, bro? Because he's <laughs> like, Dan, I love you. Okay, well, it would end our going to the playoff streak. <laughs> But then when we get there, we're not going to go anywhere. Yeah, that's true. You'll you'll, you'll just be there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I'll yeah, with twelve and five every year, and then not do shit, not even sniff the NFC Championship. No, I'm not a fan of that. <laughs> if they do, <laughs> if they do do this, I'm totally fine with it because I've seen enough of Dak Prescott. I mean, Jesus, he's been in the league eight years. I'm good. We know what he is. Uh, if they do it, then. I hope that there's some, there's not, by the way, because the front office is a fucking joke, but they should have already been planning for this. Yeah. Now, if he leaves, what are you going to do? Cooper Rush? I mean, come on. Yeah, what's your plan? Yeah. I mean, you got to have a plan before you just say, like, ah, see ya. Like, I don't want to be Minnesota either. My plan is Sam Darnold. <laughs> right, yeah, they're fucked. Yeah. I mean, that's what's going to happen. Yeah. If you do this, you, you, you have to have some sort of plan and... and the Cowboys were extremely lucky because they had Romo, and before Romo left, they got Dak mm. and just kind of hit. And that's rare that you get two guys it's that, very, are, yeah, it's very rare. that are serviceable, good regular season quarterbacks, obviously terrible in the play. They're the same fucking guy. It's weird. <laughs> yeah. Uh, if you don't have a plan, then you're going to suck because if you have a shitty quarterback, you know that your team is fucked because your quarterback touches the ball every play. He's got to be the best player on the field. And if you don't have a, I mean, yeah, you're fucked. What's your plan, bro? Are you going to fucking try to draft somebody or, you Trey, know, Trey Lance is there. I, I think he's a free agent after this year too, though. They haven't even used him, by the way. Like, just fucking play the guy. Yeah, I don't know why you traded that guy. Yeah. Why, why you traded for him? You trade. You traded for Trey Lance and you, he's, I mean, you, are you going to see what he's got? I mean, if he doesn't have anything, great, but at least find out. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but that would be the biggest free agent i think next year if that happens if they don't i mean because this could all be talk as well but that's all in for the cowboys though yeah by the way it would make sense with with washington but i mean i think it would be i mean they're about to draft a number a guy number two overall which is we think supposed to be your future we think no that it is okay yeah if they go into the season with marcus mariotti i mean what the fuck are you doing <laughs> what the fuck are you doing yeah really <laughs> yeah that's, well, I don't. See, he's here's proved time and time again on multiple different teams. I that think he's I would not going to be the guy. I ever. know, but I, would, I think I would rather have him start over a rookie. Yeah. Well, he's probably going to, but I'm just saying they're they're going to draft their franchise quarterback at number two if he works out, obviously. But that's supposed to be the plan, isn't it? I would when think. you draft a guy at number two, or it's a pretty big fucking draft to be like. There's, there's like what three or four quarterbacks that are pretty good coming out. Yeah. But I heard Jaden Daniels' pro day was pretty bad. I thought, I think I heard he did pretty good. Oh, well, okay. Yeah. But I, I think else. it's Drake May, man. If they, I don't know. I, I really, you don't I, want Caleb Williams. I can tell I've you seen that. 18 different mock drafts that have them taking a different quarterback at number two every, on every one of them. So nobody fucking knows. Nobody knows. <clears throat> don't take Caleb Williams. No, God, no. I, I, I've said that already. What is wrong with that guy, man? I don't know. He's a girl. He, he wants to either he doesn't want to get drafted by Chicago, and he's yeah. like, I'll just tank, try to sabotage this whole thing. <laughs> he's going to drop, dude. I don't think the first three or four people are going to take him. It would it would shock me if Caleb Williams didn't go number one overall. It would. To the Bears. He, yeah, but, uh, man, I don't know. Yeah. There's a lot of analysts coming out saying, I wouldn't take this guy. I wouldn't either. Yeah. And what's his name? Merrill Hodge said that. And yeah. I'm like, I don't trust Merrill. Yeah. And that's for sure. Yeah. He's like, this guy is not a. This guy's not trash. A, yeah. Yeah. So. Well, if, if Dak Prescott does become a free agent, somebody will 100% sign him. Just like they did with Kirk Cousins in Atlanta. So, a team will do that. They'll yeah. give him a fuck ton of money. Mm -hmm. uh, and then your <laughs> franchise is fucked. Yeah. Basically until he's gone. Because we know what he's. Like I said, eight years. I know. Like I said, I'm good with it. But you got to have something in place. Yeah, for sure. You can't just be like, see ya, and then be like, ah, oh, here comes Cooper Rush. And I'll be like, I mean, he's decent as a backup, but he ain't going to fucking take you all the way. <laughs> no. That's his no. job is to be a backup quarterback. He's not a fucking starter. Right. And, and I mean, Dak is better than Cooper Rush. I mean, I can say that. Now, <laughs> 
if you have something in place, do you want to draft like Shadur Sanders? I know that's kind of a talk, and I'm like, well, I don't know. Whatever. Just make sure you have something in place, bro. Yeah. Before you say, see ya down the road, Mr. Dak Prescott. By the way, if you're Micah Parsons and CeeDee Lamb, bro, I'd be like, oh, fuck this franchise, bro. I'm <laughs> yeah, out. Yeah, yeah. They don't have a plan in place, and, and we're not going to win a Super Bowl, then what the fuck am I doing here? Yeah. Jerry's right. gone fucking senile. We know this, bro. He's a goddamn old skeleton, and I'm so sick and tired of his bullshit. And just, I have no, it's going to be an interesting football season. I'm going to go in with no, I'd, I'd be like, I don't, I don't even care. Let's go Rangers. Hopefully they're still playing <laughs> yeah. in October and everything again as the football season's, you know, going on. But um, I, it's going to be interesting, dude. I'm going into the NFL. I mean, even this draft, bro, when we go live the next month for the draft. Mm-hmm. We draft like 23rd, I think, in the first round or something like that. And when we get there, I'll just be like, yay. Like, let's see what's, let's see what player they're going to swing and miss on this time. Yeah. Mozzie Smith. <laughs> Stop the run. I'm like, I've never seen him on the field. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, what the fuck, dude? What a terrible first round pick that was, bro. And it's like, and now they have so many holes in their team because they let people leave and they're not doing anything about it. It's like, those are starters. Like, wh- what, are, what, are we, what are we doing? <laughs> We're not even going to extend Prescott or rework his contract to get the number down because you're such a god-awful front office <laughs> that his cap hit is ridiculous. And, and there's no plan, no nothing. Just, uh, we couldn't afford Tyron Smith at $6.5 We couldn't afford Hankins at six hundred k or a million and a half or whatever it was. And I'm like, what are we doing? Like, your drafting and your management of a team, bro, is is god-awful. That's what it is. The The front office of the Dallas Cowboys is horrific. And we're in this situation now because of that. Because of the mismanagement of the team, the salary cap, everything. It's awful. And <laughs> now if you lose your, your franchise quarterback or whatever, if you let him walk, I mean, we're, we're not winning a Super Bowl. Until the front office is revamped and changed and Jerry's dead, bro. It's not happening. Yeah, you need, like, a general manager. Yeah. We need a fucking... <sighs> Mozzie is not a Hall of Fame player, by the way. <laughs> uh, see that? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what, did he start, like, fucking three snaps last year? Yeah. I, I remember we didn't hear that guy's name ever when we were watching games. No, and I was like, well, he was a first-round pick. Like, you would expect him to play. Yeah, and and especially defense. Usually, those guys go right in. It's yeah, like not not that big of an adjustment. Right. Ah, oh, fuck the ta- uh, dude, dude. Every <laughs> week I try, but I'm telling you right now, dude. It's it's at a low, and Leaf can can it can definitely confirm this. Yeah. I'm just I don't care. It may sound like I do, and I do, I mean yes, but at the same time, I'm kind of laughing now. Yeah, and the fandom is ripped out of my. Oh, it's been soul. a joke. This whole off season's been a joke, dude. Yeah. It's ripped so. out of my soul, and the reason why is because of Jerry Jones. Like, if I saw Jerry Jones in person, I swear <laughs> to God, I would yell at him. I would. <laughs> and I would make sure he heard me. Yeah. I don't care how old he is. He would hear me. <laughs> you know? Okay. <sighs> Moving on. Exciting news. Exciting. Let's get away from that negativity. Yeah. I'll fucking... Let's talk about the better I'm gonna, franchise. I'm going to start drinking now. <laughs> uh Baseball is back 100% officially. We were, like I said at the top, we were live on Thursday for opening day. Had a blast, man. Like I said, the stream popped off, dude. We had fucking 40-something people. And it was like, whoa, what's going on? Blew away our NFL streams, and I'm like, this is amazing. Uh, so once again, thanks for coming in if you did. We really appreciate it. We had a blast. The, uh, the Rangers game was amazing. I, there's no... I don't think there's a better way to to start the season than the way the game went. It was awesome, man. You had uh, Rangers winning that game four to three, walk off fashion, the bottom of the tenth. Uh, we had Nathan Evaldi on the mound starting the starting the season off, pitched six innings, gave up two earned. Uh, looked looked great right out the gate. Yeah. Set the tone. <clears throat> Spores, Yates, Leclerc, Robertson all came in. Uh, to to pitch the rest of the game, uh, Leclerc did give up that earned run. It was because of the weird one of the weirder plays you'll see uh, with a pass ball that mm, was a foul yeah. tip. I don't know how that's not reviewable. 
by the way. Yeah, yeah, I don't know either. So we were sitting here watching it, and you could clearly see that he foul tipped it. Uh, regardless, Jonah Heim needed to make sure that he stayed with that play. Bef- you know, besides arguing with the umpire, he needs to stick. Yeah, with the play. I mean, it's, it was a live ball, so I mean, that's yeah. why they scored because he stopped and was trying to convince the ump that it was. Yep. Tipped, Le- but. Leclerc needed to cover home. He didn't cover home. Yeah, he was like halfway there. Yeah, and so that's a that's a brain fart on both of them because of the way that the the play went. It, you know, they're not thinking, but they should have covered everything right there, and they wouldn't have scored. The guy scored from second. Yeah, on that. Uh, and then the uh, the guy that they ruled the on that the, the other guy went to third. So I was like, Jesus. So it didn't look good. It looked like we just got fucked basically uh, right there. But um, they ended up tying it up. And then, like I said, that was in the ninth. Um, and then the bottom of the ninth, fucking whoever had this on their betting card of Travis Jankowski pinch hit home run. Yeah. In the bottom of the ninth to tie that up, who hit one home run all last year. Yeah. Who has now 11 for his career. That's crazy. He's, he's on pace he's, to hit 162. Yeah. He's a power hitter now, guys. <laughs> yeah. Um, that was insane. That was a moment that just I was at, at the time when he pinch hit uh, for Duran right there. I was like, okay, just get on base, brother. That's what we need. You're you're a speedy guy. You can steal. You can you know. There's all the cards on the table if you get on base. Now, never in a million years did I think that guy was going to go yard. Bro. Yeah, that was an insane at bat, and it <laughs> God, it was it was a great moment too. Yeah. Bottom of the night, it couldn't get more exciting than that. Exactly. And then of course, like I said, I went to the tenth. They couldn't they couldn't walk it off. They went to the tenth, and then the man. I still don't like the fact that they start with a runner on second in extra innings. Yeah, I don't like that. Mm-hmm. I don't like it. Robertson came in to pitch the tenth, though, and uh, the bases were loaded. And he got out of it. Uh, he walked two people though, so yeah. I know he's being careful. They almost hit a home uh, grand slam though. Yeah, it was foul. I was like, <laughs> that <laughs> yeah. would have been ball game. Yep. Yeah. Uh, but then, of course, uh, we know that. Heim came in, uh, Heim came up to bat in the bottom of the tenth. Uh, it was a it was a bases loaded situation for the Rangers, and Heim was able to walk it off, kind of make up for his little mistake. Uh, you know, giving away that run. He mm. obviously that probably had to feel amazing for that, amazing for Heim to to walk it off. And Wyatt Langford got his first action as a major leaguer, first RBI, first hit for the kid, first of many on both of those. Yeah, absolutely. You know. And uh, we'll uh, we'll see, man. Just one game of 162, but they, they walk away with the, the win on opener. And, of course, today is game two. Couldn't be more excited that baseball's here. A couple other things around the league. The uh, Astros got murdered last night by the Yankees, which is great. Beautiful. I love that. All the time. <laughs> Every time that happens, I'm, I'm fun. It's yeah, fun. Yeah. And um, But, man, I couldn't be more excited about the Rangers season and – I definitely didn't have Jankowski at any point this year uh, having more home runs than Corey Seager. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's where we're at, bro. That's where we're at right now. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. That's the way base, that's baseball, Jenko bro. Jankowski the power hitter, bro. That's that's why I fucking love this game, dude. Yeah. Anything can happen, man. It's crazy. Anybody can come up in the ninth and tie it and be the hero, dude. Yeah. It's fucking great, dude. Love I it. I just wish he would have done the Gibson. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Yep. Okay, it was a playoff game, but, you know. Right. Opening day's a playoff atmosphere. I heard from a – of course, I usually go every year. We, just, we didn't go this year. We wanted to stream it and have fun doing that. But I heard from people that were there, friends and, and all that, neighbors, and they said the environment was like a playoff game. Yeah. I mean, it was loud, 40,000. They, they lowered the banner. <clears throat> and then tonight they're doing the uh, – before the game, they're presenting the Rangers players, coaches, everything with their World Series rings. Very cool. Uh, that'll be the end of the uh, World Series kind of celebration, which it needs to be wrapped up. For sure. Because it's 2024 20, now, and let's, yeah. we've got this season to focus on. Yeah, it needs to be wrapped up. Let's let's wrap it up, and obviously we're all super excited about what happened last year, but this is a new season. Yeah, absolutely. Time to turn the page and move on to get another one. So... We're going 162 and 0, guys. Yeah, that's right. That's what I was going to say. <laughs> <laughs> uh, former Rangers player Nelson Cruz signs a one day contract with the Seattle Mariners to retire with the Mariners, bro. Okay. Um, what's your thought about that? Because he spent four years in Seattle, he spent eight years in Texas. 
So it's a little weird. I don't know. I don't understand that decision. Um, but uh, he did fuck us over for a championship. <laughs> so good riddance, bro. But he also Go. hit like a grand slam in the ALCS to send us to the World Series. He yes. had some moments, bro. You know what I mean? He had some big moments as a Texas Ranger. You know? Uh, I mean, that's where he started in Milwaukee. They traded, We traded for him. Uh, and basically, we, we, you know, turned him into the starter that he is, but, or was. But eight years with Texas, four with Seattle. And he said, like, when he signed that, he was like, I've always felt at home in Seattle, and this is where I belong. And I'm like, what the fuck, bro? Do you think he's just traumatized from 2011? He's like, I can't even think about the Rangers. Yeah. Is that what it is? <laughs> yeah. I don't know. I mean, he had some big big moments, bro, with the Rangers. He was a very big uh, hitter and in those playoff games. Like I said, he more than one big moment of home runs, dude. He was the boomstick, bro. They yeah. still use that shit at the, for the... Yeah, and it's just weird why he would go, want to go to the Mariners to retire with the Mariners. I don't know. That's what we. That's what he. That's what he did, though. One day with the Mariners, so he's going down as a Seattle Mariner. So Nelson Cruz, four hundred sixty-four career home runs, thirteen hundred RBI, career batting average two seventy-four, nineteen-year career. Is he a Hall of Famer? Four hundred sixty-four home runs. Yeah, probably. That's close. That, I mean, that's a lot, bro. Yeah, there's guys in there with less than that. Yeah, so. 274 lifetime batting average, not bad either. I mean, you'd like it to be a little higher, but, I mean, he's not – he's a – he was an outfielder, power hitter kind of guy. 464 home runs is a shit ton, dude. It's a lot. You think yeah. he's going in? I, he he could. I I, he's not – it's not first ballot, obviously, but no, it, he uh, might get in there. He might slip in there, yeah. I think he would. I think he would for sure. 1,300 RBIs, like I said, 464 homers. That's a lot, dude. So, I, I, if he got in, I wouldn't be surprised. Like you said, there's others in there that I think that have less. Yeah, like power hitters. <laughs> yeah, power hitters and stuff. So, we'll see. But uh, going to be a Mariner, it doesn't feel right, but okay. Um, whatever floats your boat, Nelly. <laughs> yeah. Take that fucking boomstick shit out of the ballpark now, then. Yeah, no shit. We don't want to associate with fucking Nelson Cruz anymore, that guy, traitor. We started your career, you traitor. Yeah, and you want to retire with the Mariners, bro. Like, yeah, a, a, a division oh. opponent, too. Yeah, yeah. I don't know what that's about. But whatever, dude. Whatever, whatever you want to do, bro. I don't give a shit about you anymore. Yeah, really. You're, you're done. <sighs> MLB's here, though. That's right. You heard us talk about the Rangers all for a long time, of course. That's what we do. Oh, I posted our uh, reactions, by the way, to the Jankowski home run and the wine, uh, the wine, the Heim walk off. On the Heim walk off, for some reason, somebody on TikTok uh, on a twenty-seven clip where we're twenty-seven second clip where we're celebrating, yeah, uh, called us bandwagon fans. <laughs> anybody that anybody <laughs> whose team wins the World Series, somebody out there is going to think you're a bandwagon fan when you talk about it. I guess maybe it's because I have the flag hanging up. I don't know. I mean, it's the only time we've won it. Yeah, what am I supposed to do? Just not get anything? We couldn't hang this up 10, 10, 15 years ago. No. And I'm not hanging up an AL championship banner. (laughs) Yeah, I can't stand when they do that, bro. (laughs) By the way, the World Series banner at the ballpark, they put it in the weirdest spot ever, and it was all wrinkled. I'm like, guys, you couldn't fucking (laughs) prep for this? I saw Ballers still sports posters. Somebody needs to fire the people that were in charge of this because it was bad. I didn't. I don't like the banner. Yeah, it's I don't like white. It. Yeah, I would rather be blue like this. Yeah, it would have popped more. Yeah, I think the 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 white just doesn't look good. Yeah, and I was like, that's what they chose. Like, what the fuck? And it's next to the fucking big screen out in right field. Yeah, and, and it's it looks just in a so weird tiny <laughs> compared to that screen. It looks like it's just a little square up there. Yeah, and you're like, all right. <laughs> yeah, that's that, kind of weird. That can't be the final resting spot. If they're gonna have to move it because it. It doesn't um, look good where it's at. No, it doesn't. It doesn't. I don't like it. And I don't like the color either. I kind of yeah. wish they would have uh, somebody. Uh, I said to somebody else, like, did they order that last night off Vista print and just <laughs> overnight it? It looks terrible. Yes. This is like some mom and pop shop. Like, Can yeah. you make this real quick? Hurry, hurry. Yeah. <laughs> like, okay. Like, this is our first World Series. We don't know what the fuck we're doing. Bro. Yeah, it no, doesn't. After this year? And, and after the parade <laughs> debacle and this, it's like, guys, get your shit together. <laughs> yeah, act like you've been there before, even though you haven't. But <laughs> <laughs> yeah. it's your first time. Oh, my God. So, 
Whatever. I know some people are like, I don't care. At least we got one. I'm like, yeah, but I mean, Jesus, you want that thing to look good. Um, okay. Just one more thing here and then a crazy, crazy thing to get out of here so we can get ready for the rest of the day. Like I said, it's going to be a long day. It's going to be a glorious day. I just wanted to follow up real quick on the Shohei Otani thing. We talked about that last week about how he was going to make a statement. Mm -hmm. And then he did on Monday. And uh, it was just like we've said on our episode. It's going to be some lawyer prepared statement. Mm -hmm. Uh, And it was. He had a new translator, obviously, or an interpreter, obviously. (laughs) It wasn't the same guy. (laughs) Yeah. That would have been great, though. Yeah, it would have been awesome. (laughs) Ipe's up there like... Uh, he says that he did not gamble. I'm like, what the fuck? This guy's the guy. <laughs> yeah. uh, but Otani came up to the podium and spoke all Japanese. And the interpreter uh, obviously translated and all that fun stuff. Came out basically, I didn't know about this. I did never have gambled, blah, blah, blah. Once again, I for sure think there's too many holes in this story. To There's no way the guy didn't know that $4.5 million was gone. Or even if he didn't know that, because he doesn't handle his finances because, you you know, you get that rich, you really usually don't care. You're right. Most of the time, you don't even have to pay for shit. People just buy you stuff. Yeah. Uh, but if he has, like, a financial team, they're not flagging fucking 500K <laughs> leaving your account. I'd be like, I kind of want to know about that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a that's a big amount. And a total of four and a half million. Be like, yeah, yeah maybe I want to flag that and mm-hmm. let me know, even if... Ipe has authorization to do shit. Mm-hmm. If it's four and a half million, maybe let me know. Because right. I'm the, pl- I'm, it's actually my account. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So there's just some things that I just don't believe. I don't believe that he never knew about this. That's, there's no way. No, nah, yeah, there's no fucking shot. They bro. spent 24 seven together, dude. Yeah. Hotels, all the downtime. There's no way Ipe didn't fucking, there's no way that Otani didn't know. Okay, yeah, maybe he didn't bet. That's fine, but he fucking knew about it. And that's right. why I hate that he didn't tell the truth. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For him to say that he just found out like the the day after the second game at the hotel, and he was fucking baffled by it. By the way, he didn't look like he was that hurt. No, he didn't during that statement. Yeah, this is all bullshit. Yeah, I don't believe this it. is lawyers. Yeah, the lawyers saying you got to say this or I, we're screwed. I don't believe it. Uh, now I don't want to see Otani like leave, get suspended for life or leave the game because he's a great player. But yeah. I'm just saying I wish we knew the truth because yeah, it's one of those things where it's like if you have a the popular player like this getting away with something like this, you know, other players wouldn't be treated the same way. Is what I'm thinking. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Because yeah. Rob Manfred came out and made comments about this, and um. He he was asked, like, how long do you think this is going to take, the investigation that you started to get the truth? He's like, I hope it's short, but I don't know. (laughs) But but that just tells me right there that Manfred's like, please get this over with so it can get off of our top player that brings in the most money. Yeah. And um, I don't know, man. Uh, Yeah, I don't. The investigation's still going on, federal and MLB. Yeah, there's definitely a federal. So that'll bring out all the truth. Because I don't even trust the MLB investigation, bro. Not when it's this guy. Yeah, when it's your big, your biggest fucking star who just signed the biggest contract of all time. Yeah, they're going to protect the fuck out of that guy. Of course. Uh, where the fuck did Ipe go, bro? He was know. in Korea for that fucking game. Now he's just poof. He's a fucking <laughs> genie. He's gone. Yeah. I wouldn't come back to America. I wouldn't either. No, because he was gambling in California, which is illegal with the illegal bookmaker. Right. And I'd be like, oh, fuck, I'm staying in here. I'm staying in Korea or Japan. Yeah. Fuck this. I ain't going back. We don't know where he's at, though. Yeah. <laughs> That's weird, I man. bet Otani knows. Oh, of course he does. Yeah, I bet they're talking. Oh, of course, because this ain't... This is like his best friend, dude. Yeah, it's not like he didn't... And that's the thing, too. Like, he he didn't not... He doesn't know about this. Like, he there's, he knows. There's no way... I, that's where I don't believe Otani. I don't either. Yeah, and it was definitely like a lot That much fucking money? Yeah. And he's like, oh, just fuck. Oh, no, come on. Not even that much money to him. That's nothing. But, right. The, but I'm just saying. But just being bit. in the 24-7 together, because mm-hmm. he can't speak all the way. Can't, he can't speak fluent English. Right. He can speak English somewhat okay. Yeah. But he still doesn't understand some things. Right. You got to have somebody next to you that fucking knows so he can tell you. Yeah, and when they... On the road, bro, and they're like in the hotel room, and he's just like, so much time. That shit has come up before. Of course, he's like, "Yeah, man, I put fucking million dollars on this game," and you know, <laughs> he's like, "Oh shit!" <laughs> and no time's like, "Oh, I hope you win, bro." And then yeah. that, maybe that that, but he definitely knew something, dude. I I one hundred percent 
And I maybe and you know, hopefully it'll come out and we'll f- find out for sure. Like I said, I don't want him to be like suspended for life or anything because I mean, I mean he's such a talented player. Now right. fuck the Dodgers, but yeah, like if anything that would fuck them over, I'd be happy. <laughs> exactly. Because I don't like the Dodgers at all. Yeah. Literally like the worst fucking bullshit team ever. <laughs> Their stupid ass deferred contracts and all this bullshit they're getting away with. Yep. Um. So again, just wanted to say that like we got the statement from Otani, like we were talking about, and it was exactly what we said—just the lawyer prepared fucking bullshit that well, I don't believe personally. So yeah, I don't believe it either. Maybe some more evidence will come out with um, the FBI investigation or federal investigation. Because I'm with Leaf, I really don't trust the M- MLB. Rob Manfred's like, yeah, just say we're investigating it, and then I put like fucking. Like a fucking brand new detective on it or some shit that has no experience and be like, yeah, yeah. he's investigating it. Yeah, and then a couple, <laughs> two, three months down the road, he's gonna be like, yeah, we didn't find anything. This one guy, like, no resources in yeah. it whatsoever, and like, he's just like, I can't do this by myself. He's like, yeah, that's all you get, bro. <laughs> yeah. But we say we we conducted our investigation. That's what happened. Yeah. Yeah. Whatever, man. Guess more to come on that. But go Rangers, man. Pumped. Yes. Baseball. Yeah. All right, dude. A couple things. Let's get the fuck out of here, bro, so you can get those vocal cords rested. Yeah. You're talking too much, bro. Before yeah, this bro. Gig. Get my fucking voice already shot, bro, before I get up there. Like, eh. I'll be like, God, this guy's terrible. <laughs> Boom. I'll start, be good. I'll Actually, start. this is a decent, like, warm-up. I'll just bring lettuce and tomatoes and be like, fucking <laughs> throw it at you, bro. Like, oh. <laughs> Need that chain up in Roadhouse. Like, Jesus, why the fuck is <laughs> <this> so- <laughs> Yeah, yeah. There's that fucking chain link fence thing around <laughs> the stage. <laughs> oh, that would be great, bro. I'd be like, <laughs> all right, dude. Like I said, a couple of things here. Let's get out of here. Um, just want to mention out there for anybody that loves McDonald's, we've talked about them doing some menu stuff. Okay. <laughs> yeah, they're, they're, what is it? They're caramelized onions. <laughs> Give me a break, bro. And what, cheesier burgers? Okay. Yeah. And softer bones. Like, what? What? <laughs> That's <laughs> so stupid, bro. Those fucking buns have been in that store for like three weeks. Yeah, Trust they're me. not they're not fucking yeah. fresh, bro. <laughs> yeah, they didn't bake them that morning. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so McDonald's announces a partnership with Krispy Kreme Donuts. Oh, okay. And so you're soon gonna be able to go over to your McDonald's and get a Krispy Kreme donut. Cool. And honestly, I didn't even know Krispy Kreme was still around because the last location that I remember it closed. Because I don't think anybody's rolling into Krispy Kreme kind of like what you I don't like those. They were, the they were mad. I didn't, I, I've had them before, and I don't like them at They're all. They're way too fucking sweet, dude. Yeah. Oh, my God. But I, I, they were massive for a long time. They were, yeah. But there was one location, not even that far from me, but it closed. Oh, okay. So, I don't think a lot of people were lining up to go in oh, there. Oh, bro, you got a little Asian lady in your town <laughs> cooking donuts. For, that, I, that's where I go, man. Yeah, that's true. God, and they're the best, dude. They're, like, so soft, bro. Like, those Krispy Kremes are kind of, like, little... Well, if you like went, they were a couple days old, bro. If, if you went into the Krispy Kreme donut location, the, the one thing that was great is if they had hot donuts, they have the light on, and they would give you one for free. Yeah. And so if it's hot, right off the fucking line, that was pretty fucking amazing. That's but a, the goddamn icing was, you felt like I just had like a pound of sugar. Yeah, that, they they would kill you, bro. Yeah, I was like, Jesus. That's you start what shaking, bro. Like yeah, blood I Blood sugar like goes through the roof. <laughs> yeah, they're like, you're dead. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but now, like I said... You can, you, by 2026, it's going to roll out. So they're going to obviously soft roll out and more and more. But you can now get the old Krispy Kreme donuts at McDonald's, which, you know, everything's healthy on the McDonald's menu, as That's we right. know. Yeah. So <laughs> along with the breakfast, this, you said that you enjoy their breakfast. Yeah, the breakfast is good. But I won't get a Krispy Kreme donut. <laughs> yeah, you day. will. You will. One day you'll be like, fuck it. <laughs> I'm getting a McGriddle, bro. That's my, that's oh, those, my are delicious. those are <laughs> not healthy at all either. But. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty bad too, but whatever. <laughs> <laughs> I can't believe this, man. I guess Krispy Kreme's just like, fuck, we just need money. Yeah. So there you go, man. Get fatter even out there, America. Because everybody out there that eats McDonald's constantly. Fucking Lizzo is going to be in front of you, yeah. bro. Ordering the whole menu. Like, give me some of them Krispy Kreme donuts. Yeah. Aren't you Lizzo, <laughs> the fat shaming <laughs> rapper or whatever you are? Yeah, that's not music anymore because you can't fucking handle it. I quit. Yeah. Nah. Uh, there you go. McDonald's versions, by the way, of Krispy Kreme will not be warm. <laughs> they will be delivered fresh daily, though, which if you believe that, you're fucking dumb. Yeah. Just like that 16-year-old kid is caramelizing urine back there. 
<laughs> he just got out. He just got to his shift after spending all day at school, and he's like, "Fuck this place." You yeah. think he's caramelizing onions, bro? Yeah, I think he is. <laughs> yeah, okay, I think it's fresh. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, okay, last little thing here, and then we're out of here. Uh, the crazy story, I guess, to end this one on. Uh, conjoined twin Abby Hensel is now married. Did you see this? I did see this. Yeah. Okay, these these two conjoined twins, Abby and Brittany Hensel, who were on like a TLC reality show. Uh, it's one body with two heads. Yeah. It's, it's, it's creep. It creeps me the fuck out. I'm not yeah, going to lie. I, I, the guy that married him, he's got to be a weirdo. Okay. But one of them's married. Well, yeah, one. That's weird. Abby Hensel <laughs> is the only one that's married, but I'm like, dude, if you're going to, the other one wants to get married, that's, <laughs> then you're having to force them. <laughs> yeah. That's so weird. Uh, apparently they can have kids, but they share the organs. So it's like, I don't know how this works. Yeah. And I'm also creeped out by this, like I said. <laughs> this is so weird. But if they're cool, I'm like, okay, well, if your sisters that are conjoined, then why wouldn't they just not both marry the guy? Maybe because it's not legal. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah but there's know. no way that she's giving him head, bro, and that other sister is not doing something. <laughs> That's my question. Right. Yeah. That's my question. I want to know. Well, yeah, it's like they they share one body. Yeah. It's so creepy. So whatever he's doing to her, that... The other Brittany, I guess, is going to feel everything. Uh, they share the bloodstream and all the organs below the waist. Abby controls their right arm and leg. Brittany controls the left. That's so weird. It is. <laughs> I'm telling you right now that it's creepy. I don't like it, but this is something uh, out of the fucking. They can't be separated. It's too risky because oh, yeah. of how everything is with their body. Yeah, because they just have the one organs, right? There's, there's one set of they organs. They share the organs below the waist, yeah. Right. Yeah. Um, I mean, Like I said, bro, there's no way that this guy's getting head, bro, and that sister's not doing something, too. <laughs> Otherwise, I'd be like, what am I doing here? <laughs> if we got two heads. She's controlling on the left arm and putting it in his butt, bro. <laughs> <laughs> the finger in there. <laughs> yeah, the, so, yeah, he got married to Abby, so she controls, what did I say? The right part yes, side. Yes, yes, yes. She controls the right arm and the leg. <laughs> Yeah. So, but like I said, like, there's no way there, I mean, come on, dude. I mean, I, I'd be like, Hey, look, I got married to conjoined twins. And like, I obviously was doing this for a reason. Yeah. If it's a, it's a double blow job every night. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, if for, they control the organs below the waist too, that means when you're fucking her, she feels it. Yeah, exactly. That's so it's saying. like, you're having sex with both of them. Yeah, exactly. That sounds so like might as well is... just fucking put the icing on the cake, bro. And like I said, maybe the only reason is because it's not legal. Right. If they're two people, I, I guess, in the law. That's so weird, dude. Because what if the the left side doesn't like him? But she's stuck with him. I mean, you're they're yeah. sleeping with him. I mean, sleeping next to him yeah. and everything. You're, you're stuck. Yeah, you can't, you can't go. I mean, you got you to gotta shower with him. Mm -hmm. You're definitely seeing the guy naked. Yeah. He's seeing you naked. It's so weird, bro. It is, dude. How many titties do they have? Yeah, I got questions. Yeah, a I'm lot just, of questions. If there, I mean, look, if, if, if this guy may hit the jackpot, bro, four four titties, <laughs> double two, BJ. two heads, bro. Yeah, <laughs> I don't so know. Weird, I can tell you this though: when you see a picture of the conjoined twins, with, like I said, two heads, it's it's it is creepy to me. Yeah, I, I'm creeped it out. Looks, by that. It looks, yeah, it's creepy. Yeah, I don't know how he's. I don't, he's obviously doing this for the celebrity status, probably. I mean, I don't know. I, I mean, like I said, they were on TLC, so I guess yeah. they probably have some money. Yeah, sure. Um, the reality show, and they may. Oh, that's another reality show to see how they yeah. live. Because yeah, maybe one of them's not married. One of them's still single, bro. What if she wants to bang a dude? Is he going to get jealous? I don't know. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's, it's weird so, because so it's things. like it's so weird because it's like the intimate conversations you want to have. Like obviously, the person's going to be there. Like, hey, baby, can we try anal tonight? She's she's like, they have they have a massive fight, bro, and the other head's like, oh, my God, this is awkward. <laughs> yeah, and be like, I just, okay, go ahead and stick it out of our ass. Yeah. <laughs> she's got to be cool with anal, too. Yeah. You know? It's so weird, man. <laughs> man, it's fucking weird, dude. Yeah, You're right. Fuck, that's out there, bro. Oh, uh, well, hey, if, uh, if you enjoy the conjoined twins uh, fantasy, maybe they're, I'm sure that's out there somewhere on porn, or it will be now. Oh, yeah, 100%. They're working on it right oh, there's now. There's parodies already. They're, they're working on it right now. Yeah, they're probably filming it as we speak. We can't watch it on Pornhub, of course. <laughs> yeah, no, we can. Just get on a VPN. <laughs> right. I'm not in Texas. I'm in California. 
Yeah, exactly. <laughs> okay, dude. There you go, man. Let's get the fuck out of here, bro. Let's have a good day, a good Saturday. I hope everybody out there has a good Saturday too, man, and a good weekend. Obviously, the audio of this episode will come out on Tuesday. But if you stop by on YouTube, thank you. We love you. Uh, we will be back some point on YouTube, of course, as always. Uh, we'll figure that out. But audio, like I said, comes out on Tuesdays for, for, for that. It's uh, on Spotify and Apple Podcasts as well as Google, Amazon, everywhere you can get a podcast. We just know the big ones are Spotify and Apple Podcasts. That's where most, most people listen. So if you are listening out there on either one of those, please rate and review us. We would really appreciate that. That means a lot. It helps with uh, algorithms out there, gets us in front of more people, all that fun stuff. As we move along, and that again is every Tuesday morning as of now. But then, like I said, our YouTube channel, we will be going live for shit, episodes, all kinds of shit. But the best way to know when that is, Leaf? Yeah, it's out there on social media. We're on uh, all the major platforms. Uh, it's at Eskimo Brothers Podcast for Facebook, Instagram, and TikTok. And then uh, uh, out there on X or Twitter, whatever you want to call it. At Eskimo Bros Pod, uh, we post everything when we're going live. Like if, like we said, we had the opening day game the other night. We went live for that. We may go f- for a few games throughout the season, so we'll definitely post when we do that. Uh, we let you know whenever a, po- a new podcast is going live, or we drop the audio. We post everything on there, and then there's reels and stuff you can watch. So go go like all of our pages and then like all of our stuff, please. That's right. We would really appreciate it. And thank you guys so much, man. We'll be back um, at some point in the fucking future very soon. We love you. Thanks for listening, man. Have a great weekend out there. Be safe. Have a great week, too, if you're on the audio as well. Be safe anyways, no matter what. And we'll see you very fucking soon, man. Cheers, everybody. Cheers. This has been another episode of the Eskimo Brothers Podcast. Thank you for listening, and be sure to follow or subscribe to the podcast on your favorite podcast streaming service. And until next time, remember, an Eskimo Brothers bond is worth more than gold.